So the word budget can totally be a dirty word in our culture today and have so many negative things, connotations about it. Just to let you know, like kind of our background, like we didn't grow up budgeting or like being trained in the ways of financial management or anything like that. In college, I had a mentor who sat down and just taught me about his family's method of how they budget their money and how they plan out their finances and their spending in a really thoughtful, intentional way. And it was really simple and it just resonated with me. And so I had this, this awesome, I guess, financial wisdom just handed down to me that I'm so grateful for. And we've been able to incorporate that into our life and our marriage and seen some really awesome success along the way. And in a lot of ways, that's been like the one area that we've felt the most unified uh, in, in our marriage and in our life. And so we're just gonna share some of uh, our philosophy behind how we budget, why we budget, and actually break down some of our budget categories. other video where we kind of threw out there that our family of five um, spends around $30,000 annually um, and has for a long time and we share some principles and some strategies that we use to of how we do that how we how we spend only around just over $30,000 a year as a family of five um, but the biggest questions we got and I think we even mentioned in that video that we would need to break it down and kind of show you what our exact budget looks like. And that's one of the biggest questions that we've gotten is like, how do you actually do that? Because that's not a lot of money and it, it's hard. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break down our budget. We're gonna show you exactly how we allocate our dollars and where they go and how we stick to around that low 30s budget each year. But as a preface, um, yeah, it's just really important to remember with this, please don't compare yourself to us. Don't compare your situation to our situation because you are not us. You are different. Your situation is different. Your values are different. Your family situation is likely different. And so, so we share this to be hopefully helpful and to inspire and encourage you as to what's possible and you know what has worked well for us. But yeah, our hope is that you take it and you kind of analyze your situation and your needs and your values and you create something that works really well for your family um so yeah. so we don't want anyone getting hung up on like any thirty thousand dollars like that for um, you could be eighty thousand dollars or fifty or fifteen yeah. like it's it's really very and dependent. we're not coming at this from like a point of view that we're perfect in it no, by any means no our like, budget is always kind of shifting and changing depending on season yeah. and we're grateful that somebody taught us how to budget at some point and we mm -hmm. just Hope that it's it's kind of helpful and inspirational for for yeah. you. So just to give you a, just kind of a basic framework for our situation and where we're coming from, we live in the Midwest. We have a five acre homestead here. Um, we have three children, all ages six and under. Um, and yeah, we spend around just over thirty thousand dollars and have for pretty much our whole marriage, which is about thirteen years. So. Yeah. That is where we are coming from in our base situation. And so we'll jump right into our budget here. So here's a spreadsheet of our budget. And we're gonna go through each of these lines and just talk a little bit more about our philosophies, our spending. And you can see that our, our total at the bottom is 31,200. So we mentioned around 30,000. We spend a little bit more than that right now and it's fluctuated here and there over the years. Um, but the first category is our home expenses. And so that's mortgage, taxes, insurance. You'll notice our monthly expenses there are $415. And so that's pretty low. And that's because we actually don't have a mortgage. In our 13 years of marriage, one of our big priorities mm -hmm. has been paying off debt, saving and, and putting money pretty aggressively toward debt in our life. We kind of realized we've had We've had different job situations over the course of our career, but we realized if we can keep our expenses low and we can save, and then we were able to kind of early on save enough to, um, well, purchase fairly inexpensive homes and then pay them off. Yeah, and that's really a, a been a big part of it. Like we've, we've bought very entry-level kind of fixer-upper type homes 
done fixing up and the ones that we have yeah, sold, we've been able to add a lot of value to it and grow mm -hmm. some wealth that way. Yeah, so that's basically, that number there is our property taxes and our insurance. So the next category is utilities. So this is gas and electric. We'll see, it's at 200. That was great last the last several years, but this year um, it's been a struggle. A lot of utilities have gone up, so we have been, um, that 200 number has not been cutting it. So we will see, we didn't, you know, when we did our budget last December, it wasn't as bad as it is now. That has not been enough, but... but Summer is usually our lowest yeah. spending month for utilities, so usually Hopefully it evens it out, but this out. year it's not looking as promising yeah. as past uh, bills years. Bills are higher than they've been, uh, but in general, $200. And again, with that, um, you know, we do not have a... You know, we don't have solar panels, we don't have all of these sorts of things, but we do just try to be really conscious with our utility yeah. use. In the summer, we keep our like we keep our temperature at 78 degrees in the winter we keep it at like 64 you know just doing things to be conscious about trying to be conserving energy as much as we can but while still living a pretty normal life yeah and the next category is auto so that's our insurance and any like registration or stickers that we need for our car and we have that at 115 and so there's really not much to say on that one that's pretty standard and just based on your situ life situation is gonna gonna fluctuate yeah so our gas has been set at 175 a month so we actually own two vehicles we own a van and we own a little hatchback um and we have a family of five and we've actually chosen to we almost like 99 percent of the time drive our hatchback around right now because um, we can all squeeze in there, and the gas mile, like the gas, is just so much better. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just don't drive our van. Yes, it would be more comfortable to drive our van, but right now, with especially how expensive gas is, we are choosing to drive our little car, um, and that works fine. We bought the van fully with the intention of using it and carting mm -hmm. the and family we, around. You know, we and will at some point, but right now, everyone's more comfortable in it, but. Right now, with where we gas have prices are, three car seats in the back seat, and it works. So we it, can do it. it. Works. Um, yeah. yeah. So that is one way that we save money on gas and keep that number low. The other way is that we just have a pretty home-based life, <laughs> um, and so we homestead here. We work from home, um, and we just try to be pretty creative and efficient with when we go out. We do all of our trip trips together. We stack them together, and just try to make it so we don't we aren't just driving around kind of willy-nilly wherever here and there. Most days we aren't driving anywhere and then on the days that we do, you know, we we try to make the most of it and we do all the things that we can and, and we do. So we've actually really been able to stick within that 175 number even with the rising cost of gas prices. We'll see, you know, how that goes with the summer with different, you know, vacation or whatever and doing maybe some more driving, but um, so far, so good with that one. The next one is health insurance. And so we actually don't have traditional health insurance. We do a, what's it called? Like a, a Christian sharing. Sharing. Healthcare uh, sharing. Plan. So, so there's there's a lot of these companies out there now. So we do we do Samaritan. That's one of them. There's, there's a few different ones like Joel mentioned. And that number is 560 right now. It's actually... Probably yeah, I think it's going up to five ninety five for our family pretty soon, which is still really reasonable for insurance for the whole family. And it's not it doesn't work like insurance. We won't get into yeah. Health. If you have questions about Samaritan or Christian or health sharing, and you want to talk to us more, yeah. we'd be happy to talk to you about it. We love it. It's worked really well for our family. We actually, when Jim was working a standard job at a college and we had good insurance through his job we actually opted out of it and chose to go with Samaritan instead. We compared apples to apples, we compared what it covered and just our values for our health care and what that looked like and it was just a better fit for our family and so that has... And our overall cost dropped and our, yeah, from our cost the like did. PPO plan we were right. on to right. Samaritan. So. Right, yeah, our, our out-of-pocket costs. Yeah, so, so that's what we do for insurance. You'll see our next category is medical and dental, which is 130 a month. So, so with our insurance plan, one of the things is that they don't cover like well visits, your basic well visits. And so we have young kids, and so well visits are something that we do regularly. And so a lot of that 
130 goes towards like we have a ba you know, baby who's going multiple times a year for well visits and then our other kids go at least once a year. So a lot of that money is set aside for that and then there's just some extra for potential other other things that come up. Like we had a kid that had to go to the hospital this year and so while insurance covered most of that, there was some out-of-pocket expenses that we had to pay and so we just leave extra in that for whatever needs could arise. And you know, if there was something more major, like that might not be enough, but in the past, as long as everyone has stayed relatively healthy and good, that has been sufficient for what we need. And the next category is general maintenance. And this is somewhat of a catch-all. Any repairs that we need done on our home, any repairs we need done on our vehicles, or I don't know, bringing a lawnmower in, or new tires, new brakes, things like that. Like that's kind of what this falls into. And so you can see that that's $100 a month, $1,200 a year. It's not a super high amount. Like we actually had our brakes done on our van earlier this year and that ate up like two yeah, thirds of that <laughs> money or something like that. So part of it is just like when you don't use your vehicles a ton, you don't need a ton of maintenance and we weren't planning on getting the brakes done but it came up and it needed to needed to happen hopefully there's not like a plumbing Another issue or thing. a yeah like a furnace going out in the winter time um but those it kind of covers up. one or two kind of more significant events that you need to pay for and yeah in the past that's kind of been what we've averaged needing i'm fairly handy too yeah. so like generally i have a mindset of I'm going to try and tackle anything on my own right. first right. and then call a professional if like I make the situation worse or something goes terribly wrong but like yeah, generally a lot yeah, of electrical, things. plumbing, a lot of things I can try and diagnose or figure out on my own and so that's part of why that's so low too. Like YouTube videos. YouTube videos, there you go. If that's not you, like that that might, number might need to might, be higher. Might need to be higher, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so our next thing is just kind of this general monthly expenses category. So we used to actually kind of break this up into food and toiletries and pet food and, and just different things. And we've just found over the years that it was easier to kind of just lump all of these things together into one thing because every month was different and you didn't know if you'd be buying a ton of diapers this month or dog food this month. It was just every month was different. And so it was just easier to put all that money in one place. Anyway, so our total month, monthly expenses are $330. We pull that out in cash. We have an envelope of $330 that we have to spend each month on kind of our basic living needs for our family. We live on a farm and so we grow, I would say 90% of our own food. Um, and so that helps really make that number significantly less. Um, that hasn't always been the case. Previously, I definitely spent more on food than what we do now. However, even previously, I was very conscious in our spending and still trying to buy, still trying to have a really high quality diet, but really conscious in doing that on a budget. So honestly, so far that 330 number has, has worked really well. We've stayed within that every month and even several months have had this decent amount left over. So we just try to keep our costs really low. Like we just don't, we just don't spend a lot of money. Yeah. And again, so. this is one of those categories where it's like, you may look at that and be like, what? $330 a month. Like, and that's, that's totally fine. Like that's yeah. worked out for us. And I guess if we went back on like our historical budgets from year to year, like we've refined a lot of things and mm -hmm. like even challenged ourselves in some ways to like mm -hmm. slim up areas of our spending. It's been a process over time. Like yeah. it's, it's not, you know, when it was just the two of us and we were newly married, like we had more flexibility, like we, our budgets were higher and over the years we've just kind of learned how to, what we really needed, our basic necessities and yeah, yeah refine things. Yeah. And kind of going off the monthly expenses then we have bulk food and that's at $50 a month. And so this was one that actually has, was a lot higher in the past for us. Like when we were living in the suburbs and we weren't growing a lot of our own food, mm -hmm. we were growing some of our own food, but not a lot. We were in a lot of like CSAs and we're going to farmers markets and buying a lot of food. And so that was quite a bit higher in the past. Yeah, like yeah, buy a up bulk on, meat, you know, like a half of cow. We were actually in a meat CSA, yeah. an apple CSA, vegetable CSA, a lot of a lot of different things like that. And so that's sort of what this covers now, except 
there's just less of a need, so we drop that down to fifty dollars a month. One of the an example of like what we'd buy now with that is we actually just stocked up on wheat, uh, wheat berries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, recently. we grind our own so, flour to make we grind our own wheat berries to make flour. Yeah, and so yeah, we stocked up on a bunch of. We got like a three hundred dollar order of wheat recently. Um. Okay. Fun is our next category. You guys, our fun budget is twenty five dollars a month. <laughs> And I, I often tell Jim, like, we are just sad. Like, that's, like, hardly anything that we spend on entertainment. Um, Actually, we don't spend that We most hardly months. even spend that most months. We just, yeah. So, but we do have fun. We just don't go out a lot. And so that $25 usually gets put towards one or two ice cream trips for our family a month. So we don't, we don't go out to eat. Like, we just, we eat at home. And that saves so much money and we just look to have fun other ways like we do a lot of fun things together as a family like we make food together and we grow food together and we play together and we go on hikes together and we yeah bike rides like we do a lot of fun things we just do a lot of fun free things (laughs) um and so even you know when there's opportunities with like our local kind of um, nature group that we're in. Um, I go to a lot of the the free things, but when there are paid things, we usually just opt out of those ones and don't go because right now it's just not that, you know, at some point in the future we might choose to go to them, but right now we just, we don't. We have a lot going on on our farm, which keeps us, which keeps life really, really full. And we get a lot of really cool experiences with that. Like we have animals and we get to grow lots of food. Like there's really a lot of fun things here that we don't feel like we need to go out to pay money and see things. Yeah, like we're waiting for our cow, our milk cow, to have a yeah. calf on the day. Like that's that's so fun. Some good entertainment right there. <laughs> yeah, so so we don't we don't spend a lot of money on entertainment. I would say if we do get money sometimes gifted to us as a family, um, we will put it in our fun envelope, um, our entertainment envelope. And so that it will be used for, Jim and I don't go out on a lot of dates. We hang out together a lot in the evenings and make eat homemade ice cream together and do fun things like that but we don't go out a lot but occasionally it's nice to get out on a date and actually go out to a restaurant or something like that and so we'll often put kind of that money that we get from as a gift or whatever in that envelope so that we do have some extra if we want to do something like that but we probably do that a few times a year yeah again that's an area that we'd like to do more of <laughs> with the season of life we're in with young family and yep. farm and everything it's it's hard yeah yeah the next category is is our homeschool budget line this may or may not apply to you depending on if you're homeschooling or not but we homeschool so we we budget fifty dollars a month this um, is a new one this year for us yeah. this is kind of the first you know our our kid our oldest is six and so um we're just kind of diving into this actually you know some of that money goes towards us buying a library membership because we're rural and so we have to pay for that but um but that's huge and then you know we've just started diving into kind of a little bit of curriculums or books and things like that but it's just nice to have that money set aside for that purpose gift is our next category and so this is buying christmas gifts birthday gifts for family and friends and each other um, and so we actually recently, from last year to this year, upped this one from $100 a month to $150 a month, just as our family grows and there's lots more people to buy gifts for. Um, we just wanted to increase that, but we really wanted to make it a priority um, while our budget is still minimal and trimmed up to feel like we can be generous and buy gifts for people. Yeah, and kind of going along those lines too, the next category is tithing. For us, that's an important thing, kind of giving back to the the church that we are a part of and so um, we have two hundred dollars a month and again this one has looked very differently for us not very differently but differently for us in the past when we've had more of an income coming in right now we're not making very much money and so we've cut this back kind of accordingly yeah two hundred dollars a month there yeah and then the last category kind of goes off of that is support or giving and so if there's a a cause or a thing that you want to give towards we have kind of separate from tithing with the church we have a hundred dollars a month set aside for that to give towards those um causes and things like that that we feel strongly towards all right so as you can see that kind of totals up to twenty six hundred dollars a month for us so i know that's that's pretty slim but again it's it's just kind of your situation like I we listened to some financial podcasts and I remember one of them they interviewed a guy who 
kind of similar journey to what we were on with, with his family, but he managed to get his family's budget, like annual expenses down to, I think it was $12,000 total for the year. And so like it just, you know, to put things in perspective, like for us, 30,000 feels like the right fit for the season of life that we're in. And like we've said, we'd love for that to be more in the future as we're kind of growing a, a business and hoping to... Yeah, our hope isn't to stay at this forever. Yeah. Um, you know, it, again, like we strongly value being conscious and intentional with our, our finances and with our dollars. But it would be nice to have a little bit more wiggle room than we currently have. But, um, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah. So some things that you will see that aren't on the budget that maybe you'd think like, huh, how, what what do they do for that? So like we said, we live on a farm. Our, we don't have any farm expenses included. We keep that totally separate. Our hope is to that our um, farm expenses would, um, the things that we sell on our farm would cover our farm costs. And so we've pretty much been able to stay kind of within that. And so all the things that we, yeah, that we buy for the farm, you know, feed and hay for our animals, we either barter with other people or we, um, you know, through selling, you know, eggs and um, meat chickens and things like that, we're able to cover the costs of what we um, spend. Another thing is like, so our daughter takes violin lessons. So like there are kind of things that aren't in the budget that, you know, happen in our lives. I, I don't know how much a month that is. I think it's... Yeah, it's $160. $160 a month, so maybe like $2,000 a year. So that's not accounted for right now. Yeah, that's a pretty significant amount of money. Pretty significant amount, but we are taking that out of the child tax credit, credit. Mm -hmm. thing that we got last year. We just separate each of the kids so they kind of get their own the money that the government gives us for them to, yeah. to do the things. And so this is the first year she's been old enough that she's chosen to, to do that and wants to do that. And so we want to encourage her to do that and we want to create the funding for her to do that. Yeah. Okay, phone and internet is another one. And so this has looked different for us at different times, but currently we um, are with T-Mobile and we are on a big family plan with lots of other people. And we are able to use our phone and internet together. We have like the hotspot from our, our phone that is able to give us internet. And we have a pretty good amount of data that, that works for us. And so the cost because of the family plan, and I don't really know how it works, we were grandfathered into some plan. And so we were able to get the phone and the internet and we kind of have that worked out with family um, where that is not an expense for us. And so right now at the current moment. And so that's what we do for that. Probably not the situation for everyone, but that is our current situation. So some categories that we've included in the past in our budget, and I don't, I don't think we really explained how our budget works, but essentially we have individual envelopes for each of these categories for our spending for each month. And we just, at the beginning of the month, fill the envelope with, with cash. Not all of the categories, just some of the categories. The ones that we're going to be regularly Like our monthly ones, or the $330. Yeah. But for things like our utilities, we just keep that in our account. And Figure we're going to be pay paying money. that out of our checking or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of the categories do have cash. Our category that we used to have was an individual Jim and Joel envelope that um, we, you know, give some money towards like each month for like hobbies and clothing and things like that. As our life and family situation has changed, we don't have those envelopes or we still have the envelope. But what we do is basically just fill it with anytime we get gift money, like for birthdays or Christmas, they go into our individual envelopes, but we don't budget for it every month. And that's kind of just our spending money now. Okay, so in the past we've had an envelope for like hosting or hospitality. Um, and while we still want to do this, we just now take it out of kind of our monthly expenses and just haven't, just kind of gets lumped in there. And that's kind of the same. We also used to have an envelope for personal development, whether you're taking a course or, you know, learning some sort of new skill. We've also lumped that into either our monthly expenses or depending on what it is to our business expenses. And so that's kind of been lumped in, in that category if it's learning some sort of skill that pertains to a business thing. Last one we used to have is vacation, which is a big one. And so I think a few mm -hmm. things factor into that. We don't really save up for vacation right now. Um, we have a family milk cow that keeps us a little bit more, Tied not that down. we don't go on vacation. We have, we, we, we plan some getaways, but they're very strategically timed and generally not very long. Yeah. And try to do more low key things like camp or get an Airbnb for a few nights or do something that's 
not a huge a huge expense or a huge thing and so like one way we can you know we have credit card points that we can save up and use towards a vacation um, in the future we try to get you know make, if we're going to use a credit card get make the most out of it and so do things like that where we can kind of strategically use that and when we do go on vacations we do just again like our world we just try to make it as you know we bring our own food or we go to a place that has a kitchen so we we keep our costs low yeah so our our budget is it's totally not perfect by any means like we're, we're just doing our best to kind of estimate what our expenses are going to be at the beginning of each year and it, it doesn't always match up perfectly with... No, we're usually over in some things, under in other things. Yeah. And in the past it's generally balanced out pretty well. It's balanced out well for us. Close. Like, this year's a pretty crazy year. Like, mm -hmm. we're in the middle of huge inflation and wars and things going on and like... Yeah, I don't know that our lot. budget is going to cut it this year based on yeah. kind of the trajectory that we're on. Like, it, that might be a little low. Yeah, totally. In some that's okay. categories and other categories, we might be fine in. And everyone's just going to have their own categories for their own mm -hmm. life. I mean, we we sat down and kind of started with a basic budget category list, and a lot of things have gotten kind of nixed or crossed off over the year, or we've added, like, you know, the homeschool budget line, things that apply to us. Yeah. Something that this budget doesn't keep in mind that we try to anticipate, like, so for example, um, we're going to need a roof on our barn or eventually we're going to need a house roof. And so occasionally there are these big expenses or if you're going to buy a vehicle and, you know, your vehicle breaks down, what do you do about those things? They're not in your budget. And so we do have like a set aside amount of savings and an emergency fund or whatever you want to call it that if kind of one of those unforeseen really big needs arises, we are able to cover that and not feel totally strapped and stressed about it. Like we try, try to create plenty of wiggle room in our, in what we have to cover any unforeseen need that, that might arise. But because we don't anticipate anything like that, we don't include things like that in our regular budget, but if it happens, we're ready for it. In an ideal world right now, would we be making enough to cover the barn roof or whatever, yes, we would. We're just not there and like we're needing to live off of a pretty bare bones budget to get by. But like in the past, we, when we have been making more money, we've been able to save towards, yeah. you know, like other expenses we know or vacations or future, future whatever. Or investing or One of your budget categories could be saving towards something, whether it's a vacation or a new car or I don't know. Some, yeah, any anything that you know are forecasting you're gonna need in, in the future. Um, okay, so some some tips to make this work. Um, a big, big, big part of this is that your family, and especially you know if you're married or whatever partner, they both need to be on board. Like this is a really big part of our life and our marriage. And actually, for us, it is a hugely unifying thing that is that has given our family so much freedom having a plan for our money has felt like this huge freeing thing i do not have to worry about jim going off and you know buying whatever he feels like it's been a very intentional thing that we have chosen to do together funny story i was i was at panera with my mom and some of her friends a, a couple years ago and Jim always seems to get those like reward things at Panera where they just like, you know, oh, come in and get a free treat or whatever. Like they always just seem to pop up in his account. And I mentioned that to, to these ladies and they're like, oh, well, he's probably going to Panera and buying things. You just don't know about it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm confident that he's not. Like that's just, we just don't do things like that. Like I know that he's not just stopping by and picking up a sandwich or whatever. But um, for whatever reason, Panera likes to give him free rewards. But um. But that's just how we, we work and we, we trust each other with that. the philosophy and the mindset and the commitment behind mm -hmm. it, behind making this work, is you need complete transparency. And so, like, just, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or anything, but, like, I was doing the Panera, like, monthly coffee They have, like, a subscription. Subscription it's, thing mm -hmm. where it's, like, $9 a month for, like, for, like, the last eight months I was using it as, like, an office away from home or something like that. And I didn't buy one thing in the store the entire time for like those eight months. I didn't didn't just didn't buy anything in the store. I was probably like their least tea favorite cu customer. Yeah, I got free, you know, the subscription tea and coffee, and that was it. 
and and like that's that's the commitment that we have to to make this work because if there is like spending happening behind people's backs like things aren't going to balance out and at the end of the month and money's just going to wander away and disappear and like our budget is slim and we don't have room for that yeah so another thing that's really important for us that we do is we kind of balance our budget every every month and so we sit down at the end of every month we go through what we've spent and we get all the things and um, all the numbers worked out and we you know go to the bank and deposit any checks and we withdraw the cash that we need to refill our envelopes and we just we make sure everything is square and even at the end of the month that we're on the same page with everything and that is hugely critical in making the system work well and keep sticking to it. And we try and make that time fun too. It's mm -hmm. almost can be like a date night. Like most months it's really positive encouraging. There are some hard months in there yeah. where you have to like figure out where, hard decisions. Where are we gonna take this money from? Yeah, There's unexpected like, costs this month and Yeah. But. Not not every month is, is perfect. But in general if you have a plan and stick to that plan, like you're you're gonna have a lot of good positive results out of that. And it's fun. Like it's fun to see that savings and then it's fun to see like the freedom that it gives you so just a little bit more of our story I guess for us is like and we've kind of alluded to this a few times like the reason that we're living on such a small amount of money is because we're trying to start up a home-based family business and so that's kind of always been a dream of ours is to be able to all be home together and have a family home-based business and so this year we went for it and we decided to do that so we're you know we're basically investing in ourselves and we're starting kind of from scratch and we're working our way up for hopefully a long-term um you know trajectory of making income but that means starting off we're not making very much and so that's why we really are slimming down as much as possible um living off of savings and what we have to make this work because we've strategically invested over the last 13 years that's been possible for us to say okay we're, we're in a place where we want to go for it we want to see that happen that's what budgeting and having this has done for us it's given us that freedom to say like okay we, we feel confident that we're gonna we're gonna make a go with this like we're gonna give it a go and so for us like that's so exciting that's so mm -hmm. awesome and encouraging and like what we want to see happen the last tip is, um, so that's like monthly, and then at the end of every year, we have like a big picture kind of sit down time, and usually we try and make that like something really, like we actually try and plan a little trip or get away around that or, or something. A retreat or a, a retreat type like a thing, thing to yeah. really, yeah, like look back at the year, look, look back at our budget, how did it go, look at each of these categories, kind of where do we end up month to month, and then, you know, kind of the total totals for the year and see where we're at. It's been a really healthy thing for us to, to do that, to then think of the, the upcoming year and like what changes we need to make, like where did we fall short in our budget, what do we need to adjust, even just like what's our vision for this next yeah, What goals do we have? Year. What do we want to see happen? Yeah, it's just like a chance to really add like a whole another layer of intentionality to your budget. And I think it really kind of strengthens that commitment piece too because you sit down, you talk through it, you plan it out together and you're just fully like on board together with like this is our commitment we're making for this upcoming year. We're gonna do our best to stick within the, this budget and these parameters. We're gonna be the best stewards of our money that we can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so what are the takeaways here? So so basically at the end of the day, like we just don't spend a lot of money. We're pretty intentional about every dollar that we spend and where it goes and that it's put towards what we want it to go towards. Yeah, it's like that saying, uh, failure to plan is planning planning to fail. Is that how it goes? Failing, failing to plan is planning to fail. Yeah, failing yeah. to plan is planning to fail. And so it's like, Failing to have a plan for your money is planning to fail, but when you have a plan for where that those dollars are going to go, it just leads to so many options and you know you're not just saying like, oh, spend some money here, spend some money there, spend some money there, spend some money there, and then all of a sudden, where did all the money go? It's gone. You know, but when you have, you say like, I'm going to intentionally spend money here, 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 and here, and then like, oh look, like, now we have all this money extra at the end of the month or the end of the year or whatever, and now we really have freedom to... To really do the things that give you life and that you want to do. And I think there's an element too of like when you really talk through a, a purchase and what is the most intentional purchase and decision we can make behind yeah. that. Like, like we, yeah, we, we 
we try not to buy things that aren't going to add a lot of value mm -hmm. uh, and enjoyment to our lives. And so, like, uh, yeah. it just help us helped us to be really wise with our purchasing and end up with, like, really quality things, things yeah. we love and bring a lot of joy. And Even things like appliances. World. Like, if we have, you know you know, oven go out or something stop working. Like we've never bought a new appliance. We've always bought used and that's worked out really well for us. Like yeah. we've just, and we've hardly spent any money. You know, you can easily get stuff for 50 or 100 bucks on Marketplace. Usually really pretty quality stuff. Someone's just redoing their kitchen and getting rid of it. So, and that's worked out really well and just allowed us to be in an area that we haven't had to spend a lot of money in. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but like when that mentor in my life kind of presented this, you know, whole budgeting system and philosophy to me. You know, most of the time when you think budget, it's like, man, it's restrictive. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be totally like not able to spend money the way I want to spend money. But our experience has been like the exact opposite. And that's sort of how he presented it is that like really like when you have a plan for your money, that gives you freedom. Like you can spend according to that plan and, and the ways that you want to be spending. Um, and it's thought through, it's intentional. That's been like a huge game changer for us in our life, in our marriage, and how unified we are. We have our fair share of arguments and things that come up. Thankfully, not very many of them are around finances though. And like, we're so grateful for that. We're so grateful that somebody sat down and shared kind of their system of how they budget their money and plan it out and that we've been able to stick to that and incorporate it. and. Um, seen some really awesome results in our life from that. Yeah. Yeah, so we'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Are we are we crazy? Is this whole budget like totally impossible to comprehend or is this something that you get excited about and are doing in your family? We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what questions you have. So feel free to comment below and we'd love to, to keep the conversation going. Um, so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.